This lens is over 30 years old and it's exactly what you need if you want to take your product photography seriously. Today we're going to put it through its paces and show you exactly why a lens like this is going to make you a better photographer. So uh, let's get into it. This lens is from 1994 and it's still being used today for advertising like digital and in print. It's a fantastic lens, optically very sound. You can watch last week's video for a couple examples. A lens like this is going to make you a better photographer because of how slow it is and how it forces you to slow down and to think of your composition and focus properly on what you want to focus on without any computer error. There's sure always an element of human error, but, but we're also going to take a few examples today and we're going to show you what all these different features do and why a tilt shift like this is far superior than any other lens that doesn't have that tilt shift ability. But a lens like this also removes a lot of the guesswork. It removes any input from a computer that would otherwise not be what you wanted it to be. These are relatively inexpensive to find. You can get these on eBay for about 500 US dollars. A lens like this allows you to incorporate concepts that were otherwise lost in today's modern digital cameras. If you look back to large format film days where cameras usually were um, technical cameras with a separate film plane and a separate lens plane, every lens by design was a tilt shift lens because the camera was a tilt shift camera, so to speak, technical cameras. The lenses were separate from the film that would allow for a shift or a tilt or a swing in the perspective from the lens to the film, which would create these very interesting focusing effects. This allows you to do that with today's cameras where that feature has pretty much been lost because the lens plane is always parallel to the focus plane. Unless you get something like a technical camera like the phase one system. So one of the features that I love implementing with this lens is that it has a viewing circle of 50 mil even though it's a 90 mil lens. So what this means is that I can take a panoramic that encompasses a 50 millimeter frame but it's all shot with the compression of a 90 mil lens, which kind of gives you that medium format, large format look. Shooting with a more compressed lens and giving us a wilder field of view, it'll create a very interesting look in your composition. Additionally, one of the features we're gonna show off today is the ability to tilt your focus plane to either match or go opposite of the uh, composition that you're trying to shoot. If you're shooting portraits, for example, you can have the, the focus plane go straight across the head so that the whole face is in focus. Or what you can do is you can tilt the focus plane so that it goes across, like a cross section across through your body and create something where only the eyes are in focus and the rest of the body and the rest of the face is completely out of focus. Even if you're not shooting wide open, you can create very, very, very shallow depth of field using this effect. Contrary to that, if you wanna have everything in focus, I'm gonna show you how I can create an image that would otherwise take a focus stack of a dozen photos all in one shot just by tilting the focus like this. So let's attach this to the camera and we'll do a couple examples real quick and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so this I think was gonna be a good way to showcase focus. Let's just take a shot, see where it comes in. This is taken at F11, so you would assume, oh yeah, you guys are right here. Hi. This one's taken at F11, and you would assume that even though I'm at F11, everything should be in focus. But in the macro world, when you're really close and you're dealing with compression, that depth of field is razor thin, even at F11. So. What we see here is that as soon as we get away from the middle point, which is where I focused on, if we start looking towards the corners, even at F11, it's super shallow. It's, it's super out of focus, it won't work. This is where a lens like this really shines. So I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer so you guys can kind of see what I'm gonna do here. So over here there is a little wheel that allows me to basically spin the focus plane either to go like this or to go like this to go with or against the composition depending on what you're shooting. So for this scenario, we're gonna tilt it like this. I'm gonna adjust my focus just for everything to be in focus. We're gonna take our picture. And now if we look at the image, it's better. It's not there yet, but it's a lot better. So if we look at comparing to this one where it was just completely out, this is getting a little bit better, so we, can, so we can tweak it even more. But if we look down here, we can see how soft it is on the before shot, and then we can see how razor sharp it is here 
with the with the with the little tilt. So we're gonna try that one more time here. So now, if I shoot it a third time like this, where I kind of just fine tune the focus, you can see the top to bottom, corner to corner, she's sharp, baby. So there we go. Taking the focus plane like this, now we're focusing on everything that's in, in this plane of focus, at least at f11, which is gonna give us a certain range. It's the same range as if it was this way, which was the same way as the sensor plane, but, but that was only giving us a little sliver of what we actually wanted in focus. So rather than having a bunch of focus stacked images, one next to each other, I'm able to shoot it all just in one shot and it just saves me a whole bunch of editing time. So next example, we're gonna do something with the shift functionality, which allows us to move the lens around the sensor to create a different look and a different shift to the perspective. Um, one, of the, one of the cool features that this lens allows me to do is it allows me to rotate on the barrel just like that. So now it allows me to, even though I can only shift either up or down, because I can rotate the lens, I can do it at 45 degrees. I can shift up and down or I can do it at 90 degrees or et cetera, you know? So I can go, I can rotate the camera around or the lens around to get the appropriate shift or tilt that I need. So one of the cool things we can do with this lens over here is shift the perspective of where the lens is looking from. So even though the sensor stays in place because the uh, image circle of the lens is bigger than the sensor, we can choose to either look from different perspective in order to create, let's say, we're shooting a box and we want to see the top and the front at the same time, but without looking down at the product. Or in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a panoramic where we can shoot as much as nine images or just two wide or however many we need, but we can shoot as many images as possible to create a bigger field of view on a smaller sensor, giving us that medium format look. So what we're going to do to create this panoramic is we're going to start with the image right in the middle. So I think I already shot one, but we're gonna take another one where it's just focused right in the middle, very simple shot. And now we're gonna use that as our baseline. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to shift to the bottom of the frame. I'm gonna to shift to the top of the frame. And now I'm going to go back to the middle, rotate the camera or rotate the lens on the, on the camera just like that. And now I'm gonna shift again to the left and again to the right. And now I've just created like a cross of the image. So let's just do the two X's, which are gonna be at 45. So I'm gonna rotate that the lens once more, once more, take the 45 image, shift it all the way across, take that one. And then finally, we're gonna do the very last version of that shot which is in this direction. And, whoops, wrong, wrong knobs. Boom. And now using all those images together, we can put them together in Photoshop and create a much larger image than the original, which was just the middle frame. So that's why even though you have a 90 millimeter lens, you can still create images with a field of view of as much as 50 mil just by shifting that lens around. Really, really pivotal for advertising work, food work, anytime you're in a tight environment and you have access to a tripod, this is very, very invaluable. So I hope you consider a lens like this in your arsenal if you don't already have one. If you do, let me know what kind of shooting you do right now with it and maybe inspire me to create something different. For now, I think a lens like this is absolutely pivotal for my workflow. It allows me to shoot in a way that saves me a lot of time in editing. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this one. I'll see you guys next week. Later.